Hi everybody, uh, pardon my mess behind the screen there, but I'm up here in my craft room and I am going to give a review of the Yarn Ball Winder 2 um, by Lasis and I started off with the Yarn Baller 1, didn't really like it because unlike this one, which sets at an angle, it was flat like this and the yarn tended to go off of the end of it. Um, even if I slowed down, I was really getting frustrated. So we took this back and this was only like a dollar more. You can definitely get these um, on Amazon. Um, you can order them possibly off of Michael's. We got ours at a small sew, sew shop here in my hometown because I really like to try to support local. It was a little bit more expensive, but you know, that was okay. Um, you can probably get it for about $29, but just go ahead and Google it and all should be good. Basically, what it is, is you clamp it to a table. As you can see through here, you just put it on a table here. Um, this red red knob here is the clamp for the um, for the yarn baller, and so now it's on here nice and secure. Here is the top, as you can see, and this is the cone. The cone has some uh, um, matching little wedges there, and you just go ahead and put that in there. And I'm doing this one-handed, and you just turn it till it's nice and snug, and it's good to go. This is your feeder right here. So make sure your feeder is pulled all the way out because see it goes in and drops down. You just need to make sure you pull it out and make sure you pull it out good and it's nice and snug. This is the yarn that I'm gonna do. I just did a whole skein of yarn and it took me two minutes. Yes, your arms get a workout, but you know what? It was worth it, it's pretty cool. I've been able to do all these different yarns and get everything ready to go um, and I've just been sitting here watching TV and it's taken me, I've been just dinking around for the last hour or so and I'm just getting them done. So basically to run this through, um, I got the yarn and I did the pull through the center. Okay, that is the best way to do it because things, uh, you have a better, you know, as you pull through is usually when you're crocheting, um, going through them the center is easier. Um, so anyway, so I pulled through, grabbed the center piece right there. And then in order to get this through the eye, um, I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm gonna try to do this okay. Um, basically, you start up underneath and then you just loop it around the loops like that, okay? Now, mine is kind of long. It's a long piece of string. You don't need it that long. In fact, you don't want it that long because you want, this is gonna be the center of your cupcake, um, of your cake, excuse me, your, your yarn cake. So you definitely, don't want it super super long so you put it into these two little slats just like that and then I'm gonna pull this back a little bit more I'm gonna pause this just for a second okay I have it all hooked up there really good just really awesome so now you can see how it's going through now you can either pull this to the side I tend to drop this down onto the ground or you can play it on the table you can see it's just down there doing its thing and then you have this over here um, set up. So now, you're, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this with my hand to make sure that it's tight because if, if it's not tight, then it's really difficult to get a really nice snug cupcake. So just a second and I'm gonna get this going. Okay, so you can see where it's nice and snug here. It goes through the feeder and I have it sitting down here on the side or you can lay it on a table next to you, however you like to do it. And then hold this, not real tight, but just let it slide through your hand. And you're going to slowly start just a minute. Hope, oh, see, this is what happens sometimes if you're not real careful. Um, you can go either way. I'm going to go towards me to get it started. Why is this not working right? See, this is why it's good to have YouTube and have started there we go so see how it's crossing down over that way that's the way to get it started all right there we go once you get it started you can run this thing pretty darn good and see how fast I have it kind of at evil level here I have it kind of snug and I'm just letting it run through my thumb and I just am just pulling this thing through and getting it done. So if you can have just a little bit of patience, I'm gonna pause this until I get to the end. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like because it's actually gonna take me less than two minutes and you probably don't wanna sit here for two minutes watching me do this. Or well, maybe you do. So I'll just let it sit here and do its thing. 
looking at the yarn ball, you can see how it's coming through the center of the yarn. When you get towards the end of um, the skein, it might kind of knot up a little bit. So you might have to slow down for just a second. And you may have to just go ahead and um, you know untangle it. If you do that, I usually try to keep this line here snug with one finger up or a can or one hand so it doesn't loosen the, wine, the, the, the yarn up on the ball there. Um, let it run down between your thumb if you want. We're probably about halfway through the yarn skein it looks like, so I'm getting a really big hole down through the center. And one reason that it's good to have your yarn caked is, um, number one, it does prevent knotting. Not teen. Number two, it makes them more compact, so of course then you can have more yarn, which is what we really want, right gals or guys, whoever's doing crocheting or knitting. So now see how it just dropped down? I just let it drop down. I'm just letting it fall through. Now it's going to kind of come up here, and you're going to see it's kind of knotting up, because this is the center tail of the other part. So all I'm going to do is just kind of spread this out, shake it out a little bit, Kind of widen it up because it's caught down here on the end. All right, and there's the piece right here that's kind of getting into our center. So what I've also done is just go ahead and feed this out so that it's flat and it'll kind of allow us to be able to have some freedom here to go so it doesn't knot up too bad. That's one problem is I get going so fast and I get to the end and then I'll end up with a little bit bigger knot. That's the only thing that's holding me back um, from getting this done correctly. So I'm just going to loosen this up. I'm going to come back over here. I'm just going to start myself back up again. And there we go. We're back up to kind of the knotted area. I'm going to go ahead and pause it while I unknot it. Okay, so I unwound my nice little knotted area. So I'm just kind of finishing up the, t the tail end. Woo! And it actually got away from me real quick. And so there we go. It come brings it up to the tail. So when you do this, just take this and tuck it underneath, like one of the first lines. This is your center piece right here. At least I thought it was. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. It got tucked up underneath the one thing. That's why you don't want to have it super long. But there's my middle piece where I'll draw from. Then you just take your hands and cup it underneath and you just pull it up and it automatically seals down. You kind of tuck that in there like that. You take this and just kind of lay it on top and boom, you've got your cake. Nice, easy peasy. Okay, thanks for watching this and hope somebody gets um, some information on it. That's what I did. I just YouTubed it when I was researching and it really helped me out when somebody showed me how it was done. So you guys have a great day. Thank you.